Yes, gang, what is happening? We are back on the road, but very close to home tonight. Um, we do a show at the Beer Keller in Liverpool City Centre. I think it's the third Friday, is it? It's second or third Friday, any hour of every other month. It's always a sellout. Uh, we pack it out. There's 250 people in there every single time. And it's just a lovely, lovely night. It's me and my dad do it together. We don't do support. It gives me a chance to develop my stage presence and do a little bit more on stage. Um, it's a venue that we're really comfortable with doing, so Frankie tends to do a lot more new material. He can develop new material um, during the show um, because he's really comfortable with it. We have a lovely audience there, and I'm on my way to pick him up. For those who don't know, Frank has moved from Walton, where he was living for the last 14 years, to a place in Liverpool called Kensington, which is, as he describes it, the hood. <laughs> That's where he's originally from, and he's absolutely made up to be back there. Um, he's got a little house on his own, and he's fucking buzzing with it. So, he's in great spirits, I've just called him. And he was listening to 50 Cent, P-A-M-P. I called him back, he was listening to Candy Shop. So he's living life. He said he's getting in the mood. And uh, we're really excited for the show. So come along with us. Beer Keller's a really difficult vlog to film because the backstage area is right next to the stage. So there's often a lot of music. So we'll try and get as much footage as we can. Um, but sometimes it's just difficult audibly. So we'll do our best. Anyhow, off to pick my dad up. Uh, I've had a boss day myself. I hope you all had a great week. Let's fucking go. Liverpool, let's have it, people. Excited to be back in my hometown. Let's go. Hi, son. What's happening? Brilliant. Who are you then, I've just been telling the vlog that you've been listening to a bit of 50 Cent. Listen to 50 Cent. He's great. Fantastic 50 Cent. One of my favourites. Uh, oh, so it's Dr. Dre. I walk on to the... Uh, Still Dre theme. Just getting you in the mood. What have favorite, you got here? Yeah. I've got one of my meal preps. I mean, I've lost a stone, about one stone, you know, about 16 pound. And they're uh, feeling great because of these meal preps. I think they've had something taken out from the fat and stuff, you know. But, um, so what you got there? Chicken noodles? Chicken noodles. And here we are, right in the middle of Kensington. And a strange thing, really. We were just talking about it earlier on. I've done well the last few years. Not short, a dull kind of thing. Lived in big houses and whatever. But I've come back here, I've come back to Kensington. This is where my roots are really, from Old Swan. I'm from Old Swan, just down the road, Old Swan and Kensington. It's like Budapest. Budapest is actually two cities, Buda and Pest. Old Swan and Kensington, more or less the same place on Prescott Road. And I love it round here. I'm in a little house here, little terraced house. Mommy fucking old. I don't want to be in a fucking big house. I don't want to go playing fucking golf <laughs> with all kinds of fucking phonies. Yes, I played I played golf the other day. Yes, did you sign that contract for Channel 4? Yes, no, I, I, I've bought a home in the old golf. Fuck off. This is me. This is where I live. Love it round here. It's like New York. There's always bits of scuffles, bits of trouble. A few smackheads round here. <laughs> I go out at night, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, might go for some milk, all the shops are open, and it's like New York. I've had a few little scrapes here, I saw a fella a few weeks ago, grabbing this old fella, trying to get money off him, and I got him by the fucking throat. I'm like Charles Bronson here, <laughs> in Death Wish 4. Death Wish 4, the reckoning, Frankie Allen in Kensington. Who the fuck are you? I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pass the phone over to me dad because I don't want to hold this camera while I'm driving. Okay. Um, I'll let's stash those chicken noodles somewhere, and um, I'll let me dad fill you in while we're on the way on how his day's been, what he's been up to, and how he's feeling about this show tonight. I was just telling them um, about we do the beer keller every other month. It's always sold out. It's a lovely show in it, and um, yeah, it's just gonna be great. Just been speaking to a couple of good mates of mine. Well, one of them anywhere to come tonight, uh, Jimmy Mooney, great lad, used to uh, work on the doors years ago, he was a uh, great lad, and he, he's been ill lately, so he, he came to the last show, so I said to him, get hold of Peter Bow, who's his mate, me and Peter are good mates as well, they're coming down tonight, so it'll be great to see them, uh, a lot of the people we know now, because we've done it that often, we know all the staff, 
in the beer keller, Becky and they're all the security staff, they're all lovely, it's fantastic and we travel all over the country so coming here tonight in Liverpool and town as we call it, you know it's fucking great, it's brilliant, it's so easy, the crowd are lovely, you're with your home crowd, never had an ounce of trouble, the crowd have always Touch wood on that, fingers oh, crossed. It'll be sound. Yeah. It's going to be great, and uh, yeah, I could take you the next time we do a video, some of you may have seen me house tour, the last one, we're going to do a tour of Kensington very soon, this Kensington here in Liverpool, very different than the Kensington in London. <laughs> you can say that again. Right, well, I'll pass this phone to me, this to me dad, and uh, while we're jocking down to the venue, he can fill you in. So here we are. So what's happening today? I've been out, been up to Tesco's in the Swan, Old Swan, had something to eat, bit of a breakfast, came home, cleaned me Ken, that means I've uh, tidied my house, uh, had a nice bath, shaved me head, shaved me face, um, got my suit out, pressed the suit, oh, it's brand new, it doesn't really need pressing. Been to the shops, been over to the fucking Iceland, uh, made a few phone calls. What did you get from the Iceland? Uh, just kind of milk and stuff and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, it's been fucking great, had a great day, very relaxing. How are um, you feeling about tonight's show? I think tonight will be great and I've got a few ideas for some kind of new routines, new materials that are might, I mean, a lot of people that have been to see our show they come and they come and they come again, they just love it, you know. Like, uh, and that's what we're kind of like snowballing now with the amount of people that we're getting in. After the COVID things, they didn't hit rock bottom, but he took a bit of a knock. You know, nobody had any money, but it's picked right up now, which is fantastic. We're doing great. Show them round. Like so, uh, well, yeah, but I've got to turn just this round now. Flipping. Yeah. So, here we are. This is Kensington in Liverpool. But actually, if we turn round, we can go through it. Anybody that knows the area will recognise. Now look, there's the laundrette or the baggy, as I call it. One of the good things about living around here, it's so cosmopolitan, there's people from all over the world, and I love my languages and things. I've been in that laundrette just there, or they call it the baggy, you know, we that call it the baggy. No, this is the Anar restaurant, Turkish restaurant, oh, always the in Anar, there, that's yeah. the Anar. Lovely food in there, fantastic. People are great. And as I say, round here, I've managed to was in the uh, yeah. laundrette. Yeah, even the laundrette over the road from me in Kensington. Fucking sound. Been in there a couple of times when I've had a big wash. And you meet you meet people from all over the world. You know, talking to a guy in Spanish from Nicaragua. He's been here for a few years. People here from Germany, guy here from Why is it so like, why is it so cosmopolitan? cosmopolitan it's then? just one of the areas that uh, people move into when they first come to the UK so it's great you know I've had enough of living you know some of these areas that you think oh, I want to live here I want to live here it's a great area and you find out that the people are phony the homes might be nice but the people are fucking horrible but round here dead down to earth nobody bothers you once you're a kind of familiar face a few Romanian guys in my street and a dead sound I always say Boona to them which means hello they say Chay Patch, which means uh, how are you doing? So it's great, great atmosphere. Um, it's got a bad name over the years, Kensington, like a lot of places. Probably just like Kirby and, you know, maybe speak and play. You get a bad When you live there, completely different. You know, people all over the UK probably living in places where they think, you know, my area's got a bad name, but they're all unjustified, or most of them are. Because if you live there, nobody bothers you. You can really enjoy it, have a great time. Now we're just turning onto Edge Lane now. We'll be down at the beer keller, I reckon, the ETA in about 15 minutes. And we're sold out. Looking forward to a fantastic night. And we've got no support comedian on tonight. We've just got Will, Will Cranny, he's the MC. There you go. Back in business. Best looking MC in the UK. And uh, he's a movie star. I'm going to try a few gags tonight. He's going to try a couple of gags, because all I've had this week are people ringing me, sending me messages saying Will was fantastic last week, which he was. Gary Highland was very good, but Will was exceptional last week. Appreciate so I hope he's on form tonight, which makes it all the easier for me. I was just speaking, just before you jumped in the car, Dad, about how the support that we've received on the vlog since we re relaunched and we didn't know whether people were still going to be fucking arsed but we put the vlogs out and every week we're constantly getting you know thousands and thousands of views the views are going higher and higher and higher i mean what's the feedback that, that you've had from your side well look we stopped doing the vlogs obviously with the and it took another 12 months after the
to kind of recover but now what's happening we didn't realize i didn't even realize the impact that the vlogs have and how popular they were around the uk started putting them out again after <laughs> yeah. a couple of years or 18 months is it two years we didn't do anything two years for. we didn't do anything for we were still working we did three years without vlogs two years without podcasts and the podcasts are returning the, as well the, the podcasts are coming back but since we've been doing the vlogs i mean i've just been stopped there on the corner yeah. just waiting for will outside the chippy he was pulling up in his car and this guy was, this fella shows us all right frankie la you know kensington fella and I said, how are you doing? He went, give us a picture. Where have you been? I watched the vlogs. I watched the vlogs. That was like 10 minutes ago. So it has kind of generated renewed incest in the Frankie Allen show, me and Will, and all the lads, you know, that come with us sometimes, you know, maybe, um, you know, the young Dave gets uh, a good shout out as well when he comes out with us. People remember him. He's been getting recognised by people. Uh, three or four years ago, before the we were absolutely flying and everybody was obviously obviously interested in me but they used to make note of who we were with as well they talk about young dave talk about uh, jack ryan whoever we were with well, the comic on the night let me just interject for a sec the litmus test is usually on the shows i used to at every show say does everyone here know who i am first of all yeah. i get a huge fucking cheer but that diminished over time and time and time because he got people who had just seen maybe Frankie's stand-up clips and they weren't there because they were die-hard vlog watchers. Now, we're getting a lot more of people who are back invested in our team and what we're trying to do. And what we're gonna do as well, I suggested this to Will today, during the week, probably on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, we're gonna go out with a camera in Kensington or Kenny as it's known, about half two, three o'clock, and then we're gonna make our own movie Frankie Allen, Death Wish 5, the payback. And we're going to take bets, I'm going to phone a lot of people up and ask them uh, what odds they will give me, uh, what, what they'll give me for uh, actually going to the chippy at 2am and getting back alive. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll see you when we get to the venue. Let's fucking have it, Liverpool. We're going to storm it tonight, going to be a fantastic night. Any birds watching, keep away from my son. See you in a minute. Just arrived in the car park. My dad hates car parks, don't you? I don't like car parks. But uh, we're on our way to the I'll beer, can I? don't like car parks. It reminds me of one of the movies I was in, which was Death Wish 3. <laughs> what is Death Wish 3? <laughs> Everyone will know, Will. It's only you that doesn't know it. <laughs> okay. Where he finds these uh, fellas in the car park, trying to kill the, this uh, couple, and he, he, he gets them all, he kills them all. Yeah. Death Wish, Charles Bronson. Yeah, so we park in this car park, Liverpool 1. It's like literally a two minute walk to the venue. Nice little chilled one. We'll get there. Quick sound check. T's been there since half five, Dad. So who's been there? DJ. The DJ. T, yeah. yeah. He's normally late, isn't he? I know he's changed his shift. Oh, Good lad, T. Nice one, mate. So. Well, let's see. We can go through the song. Yeah, we can't lie. Go through the song. Get everything set up. Show you what the setup's like. Bob's your fucking uncle. Let's have it. Now we are outside Zara. There's one man who gets decked out in here, isn't he? Young dude, he gets his clothes from here. The Don himself. Let's roll. Tanner, mate. Tanner, mate, you're all right. All good. Here we are. This is going to be absolutely jam-packed, sold out this evening. Cannot wait. So here we are, we have arrived at the beer keller, I'm on stage. And this gaff is going to be jam-packed tonight. We'll go in, see me daddy's in the changes. And as I said, if you can hardly hear us tonight, the reason being is because I'm on the stage here. Literally, that is where the dressing room is. So, sometimes we have problems with the audio. Anyhow, here's me dad chilling out. Back in your, uh, you know, it feels very much at home here, doesn't it? Feel at home here, just been uh, meeting the lads again, DJing and everything. It's just kind of like, feels though we've never left here. We're always here, we're here once a month, second home. Mm. So we're going to go go on stage now and try out, uh, go through the final song that we do, or the only song we do, the finale, Sweet Caroline. I always feel better once I've done it once, and then uh, you sail through it at the end. It's going to be a great night. 
But uh, as usual, we have got waters, Diet Cokes. Anyone who's worked with us before knows we're not fussy. No champagne, no beers, not like that. That's all we're after. Well, he's just asked me about the sandwiches. I said, bring it on later. But we're both kind of on like mad diet, so we'll just see anyway. Yeah. We're bringing them out later. Nice, okay. so just in case you've never seen it before, we have a lovely full length mirror here. All this stuff I'm assuming is from another show. Little dressing room. It's a nice little way they've set it up tonight, isn't it? I like it well, I think it's great. Um, it's always nice and clean here, you know, I'm not saying places are dirty, but look at the floor. Yeah. You know, the walls, as soon as you come here, a lovely smell. You know, it's pristine, it's a lovely, lovely place, you know, very, kind of like new in it, it's relatively new, but they keep it very, very clean. It's boss. Right, let's get out and do the sound check, eh? Let's do the sound check. Yeah, we can run through the three can line, that'll be great. We're not going to play it now though, why? Why? On the vlog. Oh no, because you can get done without the pain. Royalties. Yeah. So we're going to do the sound check now. The sound check. We've done the sound check really. So now we're going to do the Sweet Caroline song. But you can't hear it. Otherwise, we go bankrupt. We'll be sued. <laughs> Neil Diamond keeps robbing our fucking ad revenue. Neil Diamond rang me last night on my go mobile on. when I was in bed. And I said, fucking hell, Neil. He said, Frankie, fuck off, mate. Just fucking leave me song alone. I said, all right. You do it better than him, don't you? <laughs> so being brought an incredible array as per the rider of. Sarnies, which I'll definitely probably get stuck into, and a load of crisps. That what we do if we don't eat them is what snaffle them, which means snaffle them means take them. They've been given to us, so we're not pinching them, yeah. we're not robbing them. Just throw them in our bag, take them home. Honestly, this is like something instilled in scouts, probably because of the war. You know, where things are bad, never waste anything. <laughs> Can't leave all these sandwiches going to fucking waste, but all the crisps. Somebody else can have them when we get home. Yeah, and what are you talking into? I've got this meal deal or whatever it's called. Meal prep. prep. And uh, lost of stone, 15 pound doing this. Needed to lose a bit of weight. A bit tempting when I see all the crisps and sandwiches. I'll tell you what, that looks decent though, that noodles. And I'll tell you what it's like, this is chicken noodles. Is it taste test? Oh, no, no, no. You haven't ordered any of them for next week, you know. I'm not getting them next week. Got some. Nah, it's nice though, looks nice. I had the lasagna before. This is lovely one. Right, well, I'll let me get, dad get stuck into that bit of broccoli, noodles, chicken. As you can see, it's steaming. Really Backstage, how did the chicken noodle go down? Chicken noodle was great. Really fabulous, tasted lovely. And uh, you lose weight on it, so that's the good thing. Belter, so excited, the crowd's filling up, nice. Um, it's gonna be jam packed tonight, sold out as usual. Um, if you haven't been to Liverpool before, it's decent, you know, it's a really good city to come to. So if, you find, if you're from all over the UK, I mean, there's people here tonight from Glasgow, Newcastle, Derby, Langethny, Cardiff. Langethny, which is Anglesey. Yeah. Got people from like Northampton, near London, all that, all over the UK, really. So fantastic. And Liverpool's a great place. A lot of history here, but a lot of places to see. If you want to come here for the weekend, and a lot of lovely hotels quite close to the beer keller. There's one like literally that you could touch as you come out the Hilton Hotel yeah. is right opposite. And I believe it's not dear, they're quite reasonable. So have a think about that about having the weekend in Liverpool the next time Frank Allen and Friends comes back. There you go. Uh, blast from the past that Frank Allen and Friends. So yeah, excited for the night. I mean it's quite comfortable here, I feel really at home. We're starting the show in 30 minutes. Um feeling good Dad, are you feeling good? I'm feeling good about it. I'm not going to look through the door. Sometimes I open the door and have a look. But there's always some people who kind of catch you. Looking yeah. at them, you'll, you'll get found out. And then you start waving and all that. So no, I'm going to stay in here until I go out onto the stage. So uh, it's going to be fantastic. I've got that feeling. Everything today has been running great. You know, kind of like everything. We've been on time. Will pick me up on time. We got ready on time. The sandwiches are here, the crisp. Everyone's been dead nice. Uh, sold out by today, it was sold out. So it's just spot on. Gonna be a fantastic night. We're all rowing, we're all working together. 
and it's these shows you want to come along to the Frankie Allen show because they are fantastic brilliant night last Friday up in Southport lovely crowd there at the um, Grand Hotel absolutely fantastic and we're booked all over the UK so uh, watch this space yeah tickets available for all shows at frankyarn.co.uk or frank is available to book for your venue town or city get in touch with us and i'll fucking bring the party with me as well have a bit of banter with people we always come as a duo so yeah get a vlog or get on the vlog as well get on the vlog yeah make a name for yourself <laughs>
Yeah. What happened with that fella? What happened with that fella? The fella was kicking off. Yeah. He come when I come out on stage. So my dad doesn't know the backstory to this, but when I come out on stage, uh, there was this fella and he was saying, uh, I'm, I'm Mike Tyson, and I was going, you look like the fella up and black taking the piss and all yeah. that. Now, what had happened pre-show? Yeah. He'd walk downstairs, this big fat fella he was. He'd walk downstairs, and the chef was putting out food on the pass yeah. to be served to customers. He grabbed all the food, chicken wings, and that, and just beat at them all. So Aaron, who's a lovely yeah. fella here, he, he went up to him and said, what's happening mate? Why have you just done that? You know, what's the money for the food? He said, you, you the CID, he started being a pickle and all that. And he said he was being horrible. So he said, I was going to tell Frankie, but I didn't want to antagonise him. Uh, so you didn't even know that. So what happened with him? Well, we went on and I could tell straight away if someone's kicking off. And he was kicking off, but he wasn't kicking off having a laugh. He was kicking off wanting to fight, really kicking off. So, with people like him, you can't show that you're scared, even if you're high, you can't be scared. Especially when you're on stage, you know, that stage is mine, I've got to control the room. So, I told him, I took the piss out of him a little bit, but he didn't have a sense of humour, he was really going for it, really kicking off, he wouldn't shut up, shouting out all the time, and that's where it's ruining the show. Good advice to other comics here, up and, up and coming. Once you feel as though it's ruining the night, don't spend all night with him. Him shouting out and you having to go with him because the night's gone then. I just said, look, get him out. I've got the crowd on my side, what do you think? They were all screaming, get him out, get him out. And the bouncers, our doorman, they came over, grabbed him, tried to get him out. So I don't know whether you got it on film. I didn't get it on film. But what happened then was, he kind of broke away from the bouncers. He jumped up on the stage and he was moving towards me, trying to hit me, big fat fella. But I've got a couple of good mates here as well, Jimmy Mooney, you know, Peter Baudrillard lads, and they would have batted him anyway. But I was ready for him, and I was going to chin him. I thought, I'll just wait till he gets just a couple of feet away from me and chin him. But the lads jumped on him, he was only a few feet away, and dragged him away. But I'm not bothered, I feel dead calm, it was sound, he's gone now. Not bothered about a prick like him. But I'm not saying it was a good thing, it was a bad thing, it was a terrible thing. But with this audience, especially the kind of Liverpool crowd, they're very loyal to their own city. When I said, who's backing me up if he comes back? We're all screaming and all that. So, I know it's going to sound weird on camera when people see this. How can a bit, a bit of trouble be entertaining? But it's quite entertaining. Now, I'll tell you way. this. I have not seen an audience like that for a long time. Yeah. Because... Well, when you always say they're like a rough pub, yeah. like that is the rowdiest crowd. I mean, we had Mad Friday. Yeah. This is more of a, a you know, you know, a, a jovial crowd. The more, yeah. the like, more light-hearted with everything, and they're going for it. But they're just a lot of people are pissed and and, and really. You've been drinking all day, a lot of them. Mm. Having said that, you know, I brought the house down. Yeah. And you can don't be frightened if you get a noisy crowd. They can't help themselves. You might talk a little bit to the mates or whatever because they've been drinking all day, they've got no concentration. But then you might they might hear a routine that they like, then they'll listen for 20 minutes. So you've just got to keep at them and at them and at them. Never give up, never show that you're frightened. Or never show, don't be, keep saying, don't keep saying to them, will you be quiet, will you be quiet? Just let them be a little bit noisy. Because a lot of people in the audience are still listening to you and you've got to win them over, you wear them down like a boxer in the ring, you're fighting and fighting and fighting. You might think you're behind on points and the next thing is you've got to knock out which is not how you start, it's how you finish. I was kind of not struggling, but doing a bit noisy during the middle. But right at the end, I give him the Everton gag, and bang, that knocked him out, and I'm gone. Definitely. Um, you know, a lot of psychological tactics that my dad played on, all the Liverpool stuff, you know, this fellow was from out of town, we're all scousers. Kind of like, Liverpool are very, very tribal as a city. We all are here, and like, people love that, don't they? They love the fact. I was sticking up for the city, so to speak, and he was out of town. People in Liverpool are very suspicious of outsiders, especially somebody kicking off. They feel very, very insulted. How dare they come to our mm. city and kick off? Yeah. 
in a way, it's like as though someone broke into the house. That's the way they, that's the way they view their own city. It's as though someone's in the bedroom kicking off. How did they get here? They feel that they're, like a front, they're insulted. How the fuck? This fella's not even from Liverpool. He's kicking off. Mm. We don't mind our own kicking off, but we're not having outsiders kicking off. So and I guarantee, the world, I've had it all before, there would have been about 100 fellas in here that would have backed me up tonight. And there's some tough fellas out there. Yeah, there so anyway, forget about that. The night itself is going great. We're gonna have a short break. I'll be back on, and uh, I reckon we get back on at nine o'clock. Nine yeah, o'clock onwards and upwards. And uh, I mean, Sweet Caroline's gonna go off like a fucking bomb yeah. in here. It's it's been outrageous so far. Uh, All's well that ends well, and it was a great night. Looking forward to the second half. Gonna take a break, have a breather. Let's have it. When you're on stage, you never know really what it's going to be like at the end. You might think you're doing your thing that it's not appreciated with a noisy crowd. Like, they were rough tonight, they were rough. A lot of them have been drinking all day, you can tell. They lose concentration, but it doesn't mean that they don't like you. They don't appreciate what you're doing or you're trying to do. So, at the end, I mean, the, the, the queue for photos just went on forever it was just unbelievable everybody in the place hundreds of people fantastic night lovely people people from glasgow fella come up from cornwall london northampton uh, anglesey all over the uk so the way it's going now we're doing fantastic big shout out to my son will cranny handsome will we're doing all the hard work behind the scenes well i will give me dad a compliment tonight i did say to me dad in the break most comedians would have died on their fucking arse in that environment. Now, we played it well, we got in and got out. In terms of, if you was an analogy with a boxing fight, yeah. that was all about going in with power, showing them that you weren't there to be, to be hurt, fucking going for it, and just knocking them out basically. Mad crowd, um, I've never Crazy seen Sweet crap. Catalan go off like that at our shows in my life. Lots of people who are now very, very heavily invested in the YouTube and that, as you saw tonight, people's reactions and I mean, talking and... The turnabout in a few weeks has just gone through the roof. So God knows what it's going to be like in a, a few more weeks. It's really catching fire. Mad, isn't it? Yeah. So, I thought you were really good tonight, Sharp, and you handled them very well. No. Yeah. What did you think? I thought, you know, I've done very well, I worked hard, I never let up, I never give up, I kept on trying them with different material, trying different approaches to them, picking on them, doing silly stuff, seeing what they wanted, riding the storm when they were getting a bit noisy, got right through to the end, all right, the fella kicked off, I thought I handled that very well, nipped it in the bud, as soon as he kicked off, like he wanted a fight, I uh, got him thrown out. So, otherwise, I don't think if, it, you know, if there were no security here, really, I think we would have had a lot of trouble with that fellow. I agree. Um, and I always like to, you know, double check if it was the right call. Every single member of the staff said the fellow was being a dickhead right from the start. The fellows that were sat next to him were saying he was being a dickhead. 
Obviously, he grafted the chicken downstairs and all mad shit like that, so... Just a fucking idiot, you know, fucking prick. And, uh Just drink, he might be a nice fella. He might be a lovely fella, just drink it, as you said. But we just don't need it on our shows. Thank God, he was thrown out and it didn't really... What The only thing you can do when you get someone kicking off like that, it can ruin the whole atmosphere, ruin the whole night. All you've got to do is try to make it a little bit funny. Saying it's fucking rough in here and all that, and have a laugh over it. Who's with me? If he comes back in the room, if he kicks off again, who's with me? So that was it, really. We got over that, and from then on, done. You know, done quite a lot of material tonight, so nobody complained. He got the money's worth. It's ten o'clock now. We started at eight, you know. So between me and Will, we absolutely stormed it. We're fantastic. Well, it's a yeah, two-hour show. Um, what can we say? Killed it as usual. Go and get a nice decaf coffee or something like that uh, from Black Sheep downstairs if it's still open, and then chill. <laughs> Thanks very much, Top. Appreciate it. Man. Top man. You're a legend as oh, well. thanks, man. lads. Hey. On the vlog, did you enjoy it, lads? Great he's show. A, he's a legend. Honestly, you need to take what a week that you. Oh, appreciate Honestly, it, bro. mate. Thank you. Yeah, you have a good night, anyway. Yeah. Oh, Top man. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. All the very best. See you later, boys. Oh, yes, lad, you made the vlog. Time. Good night. Oh, night's amazing. Thank Belter. you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Guys. Bye. Just dropping my dad off home. We both feel, we both actually really enjoyed it. I mean, it's weird because we're so experienced at what we do and we do this stuff all the time. It's nice being on your toes for once, isn't it, in a weird way? Kind of. I'm not saying we've had it easy, but compared to last week, I'm not saying we're an easy crowd, but it was so relaxed. Yeah. So very kind of like, you know, you only had to say, not even finish a joke, you only had to talk and they were laughing. They were a lovely crowd. It was very peaceful, wasn't it? Very peaceful. Yeah. But tonight, they were very, very different um, than the Grand Hotel. They were kind of like, um, what I would say, it's just like walking into a rough pub in the 80s or 90s. Yeah. That's exactly what they were like. They've got no concentration. They don't want to listen. They're just talking rubbish to each other because they're pissed. <laughs> they're all pissed. You've got to shout at them. That's what I always say. I've always made the analogy, when you get a rough crowd like that, a noisy crowd, what it's like, if you look at a crowd, I always think, think of a five-year-old kid, a baby. Someone says to you, entertain that baby for an hour. Yeah. You go, okay. Now, you might get one kid who's a lovely, pleasant little kid that wants to giggle, smile and have a laugh with you and tell the kid a few stories. But you might get one kid who's very naughty, that doesn't want to listen to you, won't pay attention. And that's what I'd say that crowd was like tonight. Yeah. And with them, you've got to be the carrot and the stick, talk to them, never show that you're frightened of them, kind of cajole them, you know, persuade them to listen rather than be aggressive. Um, raise your voice, pick on certain people. You know, once you find out the gags aren't working because they're too drunk, to compute a gag in their head, you know, they can't make sense of, you know, few of the gags were going over their heads because they were drunk. So, oh, you've got to keep, just keep picking on them, picking, picking. Yeah, I mean, you run out of things to say in the end, you start repeating yourself a little bit. But even when the fella kicked off, the drunk fella, the fat fella, he wanted a fight and all that, all right, never got to a fight, he tried to get on the stage. Um, in a strange way, it's, it's entertaining in a way. People will go, fucking hell yeah. Did you see that? Remember that fella that kicked off? Like they've watched the film or something, watched the movie. Yeah. Did you see that part? Yeah, he nearly got Frankie, didn't he? The, the door, the bouncers dragged him away at the last minute and all. And what do you think would have happened and all that? So it's kind of entertaining. Don't get me wrong, that's not what we want. But that's the kind of crowd that we had tonight. Half drunk, bit rough. So you have to kind of play car, you know, you play with the deck that you're dealt. And that's what we were dealt tonight. Um, Will was brilliant tonight. Appreciate Calmed him down. Got them in the palm of his hand before he brought me out. Otherwise, I think it would have been very, very difficult to get him to. Couldn't have had support quiet. on a nice show at all. But having said that, you know, although the crowd were boisterous, there were lovely people there. People were coming up. I watched the videos, I watched the vlogs, the show was fantastic. I mean, the fucking reception at the end, you'll have seen 
how well the song went down, the applause at the end, the fucking, the, the meet and greet was just like a joke, like it was going on for pick for, it was standing room only at the back, it was just, a, it was, it was insane. I mean, it shows how far we've come when we just do that and just think that's just like another day at the office, you know what I mean? As rough as they were, there's good, some good, you know, points to take home. You know, we've got people there from all over the UK tonight, from Glasgow and London. Fella come up from Cornwall, New Key. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And the Scottish lad came from Glasgow, you know, fella from Newcastle, Sunderland. You know, I said to the guy from Sunderland, that said, You're not from Grangetown, are you? That's exactly where he was. Go on. The strange thing, Grangetown in Sunderland is rough. Yeah. You know, so they're the kind of people we seem to attract tonight. Yeah. He came all the way from Sunderland, but he was a little bit rough. So, but no, they were lovely people. They'd be great. They give us, a, you know, he can't grumble. Is that a you know? brass walking past there? No, it's not a brass wheel. They're up on Shield Road. So, <laughs> no, fantastic. We both done a great job. Couldn't have got on any later. We would have had a bad time. Got on just at the right time, and uh, fantastic. It is what it is. Well, look, gonna go in. Big thanks to our Will, all the staff tonight. Yeah, Keller, thanks to everyone that's coming from all over the UK. And uh, thanks to my mate Jimmy Mooney coming along here, coming down there tonight, and uh, Peter Bow, very good friends of mine. And uh, God bless, thanks everyone. Big thanks, people. See you on the next show. See you on the next vlog in a bit. See you later.